Hello, welcome back. My name is Salma and in this video I'm going to be talking about three things that are related to data sharing, which are mutual exclusion, race condition, and critical section. According to Wikipedia, mutual exclusion is a property of concurrency control, which is instituted for the purpose of race condition. It is the requirement that one thread of execution never enters its critical section at the same time that another concurrent thread enters its own critical section. Well, that was pretty confusing, wasn't it? But don't worry, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to go over an easy example to help you understand this definition. But before I get started with the example, I want to clarify something. In this example, I will be using two threads of the same process meaning that these threads share the process's data. In other examples, there might be two threads of different processes. And it's still applicable for these threads to share data, but the only difference in this case is that the mechanism is going to be explicit, whereas in my example, the mechanism is implicit. You are going to understand this more as I go through the example, so let's just jump in. As I mentioned, I have two threads of the same process. Thread 1 eats donuts, whereas thread 2 makes donuts. One of the process's data that is shared with and can be accessed by both threads is a variable that is carrying the number of donuts. What thread 1 does is that it treats the number from the shared memory location, subtracts from this number, and then updates this shared variable with the new number to be shared with the other thread. Thread 2 also reads the number of donuts in the shared memory location, adds to this number, and then updates the shared variable with the new number so that it could be shared with the other thread. Now, it's not necessarily true that thread 1 starts execution first, but let's say that thread 1 will start first. So what thread 1 will do is that it will read the number of donuts in the shared memory and keep it in a temporary register that is only for thread 1. So it's going to read 10 and then keep it in this register in the memory. Next is going to subtract from this number. So say thread 1 is going to eat 2 donuts. This means that it's going to subtract 2 from the 10, which gives us 8. Now I want you to notice something. Thread 1 subtracted the 2 from the temporary register, not from the shared variable. Keep in mind that updating the shared variable is a completely different step. So now the next step is updating this variable. But let's say thread 1 gets preempted for some reason, meaning that something happened that is going to stop thread 1 from completing its execution. What's going to happen in this case is that the system is going to leave thread 1 as it is and move to thread 2 and start its execution. Just like thread 1, thread 2 is going to read the number in the shared memory location and keep it in the temporary register just for thread 2. Next is going to add to this number. So let's say this thread is going to make 6 donuts. This means that we have 16 donuts in the temporary register. Finally, let's say that thread 2 is going to complete its execution, meaning it's going to update the number in the shared memory location with the number in the temporary register. So it's going to take the 16 from the temporary register and put it in the shared memory location to be shared with the other thread. So now that thread 2 finished its execution, the system is going to switch back to thread 1 and complete the execution where it left it. Now if you remember, the only step that was left for thread 1 was this step, in which it was going to take the number in the temporary register for thread 1 and update the number in the shared memory location with it, meaning that now it's going to replace the 16 with the 8. Now let's look at this number here. This is supposed to be our output, or the current number of donuts. But this number is not correct, because we said that thread 1 is going to eat 2 donuts, and then thread 2 is going to make 6 donuts. Putting in mind that we started with 10 donuts, we should be left with 14, because 10 minus 2 plus 6 gives us 14. What happened in our example is something that is called race condition. Race condition is an unwanted situation that happens when a system tries to perform two or more operations at the same time. And because of the nature of the system, the operations must be done in a proper sequence to give the correct output. 
The two operations that we had in our example is eating and making donuts and the system was trying to do both operations at the same time which resulted in race condition. Keep in mind that race condition is always related to time and the order of execution. Next we have critical section or critical region. This term refers to a part of the program in which a thread accesses a shared resource, such as the shared memory location, which in our case was the number of donuts. Concurrent access to this critical section can lead to many errors. Now let's go back to our example and see where the critical sections are. So in these steps, thread1 accessed the shared memory location. So it, it read this number and then updated back the number. Thread2 also read the number in the shared memory location and then updated it back when it added a number to it. Now in this example, the critical section for thread1 and 2 are really similar, but please keep in mind that this is not always the case. The critical section or region refers to the part in which the thread accesses the shared resource. Now that we understood what race condition and critical section are, let's take a look at mutual exclusion. What mutual exclusion does is that it stops the race condition from happening. It does that by making sure that there is no concurrent access done by threads to their critical sections. In this figure, Thread 1 enters its critical section over here and it doesn't leave it until here. What mutual exclusion does is that it makes sure to block any thread that wants to enter its critical section until thread 1 leaves its own critical section first. Now let's apply this to our example. The problem or the race condition happened when thread 1 got preempted and thread 2 started execution right away. The idea of mutual exclusion is that the system is going to block thread 2 or any other thread from entering its critical section until thread 1 is done with its own critical section. Only then thread 2 can start accessing the shared memory location. Now notice that the shared variable now has 8 and when thread 2 makes 6 donuts this means that it's going to add 6 to the 8 and give us 14 which is the correct output. Finally, mutual exclusion has four requirements or principles. The first one you already know, which is the main idea of mutual exclusion, and it is that no two threads or processes can be simultaneously in, this, in the critical section and accessing the same shared data. The second one is that no assumptions must be made about hardware, for example, memory. The third one is that unless a thread or a process is in its critical section, it should not prevent any other thread or process from accessing its critical section. Meaning that, for example, if we had a third thread in our example and thread 1 was in its critical section, only thread 1 can prevent thread 2 from accessing its critical section. Thread 3 cannot prevent thread 2 in this case because thread 3 is not in its critical section yet. The last requirement is that no thread or process should wait forever to enter their critical section. In the next two videos, I'm going to be talking about strict alternation and Peterson solution, which are two ways of applying mutual exclusion. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thank you so much.